Hi, this is Margo. This is Monday evening, July 15th, 2019, 5.44 p.m. Pacific Time, United States of America. We're going to look at some solar weather tonight. We have another Earth-facing coronal hole. Well, we've got a couple. It looks like the sun is just kind of not looking very healthy in my mind but we've got a coronal hole over here that we've got the um, the uh, solar wind coming from from the Sun hitting the earth now we've got another hole over here and here here so I don't know it looks to me like it's just not very healthy this corona is it's got lots of holes but um, we're in the middle of a solar wind storm and that's according to spaceweather.com we're gonna look at that we're gonna do a follow-up on Barry and I'm gonna I've got a couple of articles about um, more water articles and then I thought we'd go over recent comments on my YouTube channel and uh, just to have a little bit of community going here and then we gotta look at earthquakes so maybe I can get through this without it being too long so here on spaceweather.com this is um, interesting it says <coughs> The solar wind is here. Earth is entering a stream of solar wind flowing from a hole in the sun's atmosphere. So far, the general action of the stream has not caused significant geomagnetic activity. Nevertheless, minor geomagnetic storming is possible later today as the solar wind velocity increases to forecast values of over 500 kilometers per second. Well, let's refresh and see. See, right now it's at 427 kilometers per second. <coughs> so that affects our magnetosphere. Also, tomorrow there's going to be a partial eclipse of the moon, and it's called a thunder moon. And it's going to be tomorrow, July the 18th, and the full moon will pass through the shadow of our planet a little bit off-center. And here's a movie that we can play that shows it. And this movie was created by space artist Larry Cohen. And it shows how 65% of the lunar disk will fall into darkness. So let's watch the movie. So here's the full moon coming across the sky. And that's where the Earth passes right there between the sun and the moon. And so we block out. Our shadow blocks out. We're blocks it out. And this is where you can see it. It's going to be in Australia. <coughs> South Africa and South America <coughs> so we can't see it from North America at all <coughs> it's going to be a three-hour eclipse maximum coverage is at 2132 32 universal time Africa, Middle East, Eastern Europe, and um, North America, we won't see it. Here's NASA, NASA's visibility map, if you want to see if you're in the eclipse zone. But the good areas are going to be down here. And so on. So I think that's interesting. It's called a thunder moon. According to folklore, this full moon is the thunder moon, 
named after the booming electrical storms of July. Tomorrow, observers will find out if 65% of a thunder moon is still a boomer. This is the last significant lunar eclipse until May of 2021, so catch it if you can. So, there's that. Now this is a pretty picture. This is, they're calling this a rainbow bridge. This was taken in Sweden. That's just beautiful, isn't it? And look, there's another rainbow up here in the sky. I love this picture. And then there's a bridge over here, over the, and here's the water. You can go to spaceweather.com for today and see the rainbow bridge and then um, we've got well that's really all I wanted to show we've got 39 39 fireballs coming in we've got 1983 potentially hazardous asteroids nothing today the next one is on July 17th <clears throat> we've got cosmic rays that create high radiation especially when you're flying and here's the table for the hot flights for today so this is an interesting website here's um, what's this noctilucent clouds these are clouds that you can see uh, in the northern season. And here's um, the coronal hole. They're pointing to this one over here. But we got more coming up. Right now, the KP index is quiet. That's for geomagnetic storms. And for 24 hour maximum, KP will equal 3. That's how they measure the index is KP, whatever that means. And 3 is not, not terrible. It's pretty quiet. We've had 7 days without a sunspot now. And we're in a solar minimum for... Um, sunspots so that's when the sun gets more quiet <clears throat> now let's take a peek at what Barry is doing um, here here's what NASA worldview is showing today we can see that it's come on up through uh, Mississippi Tennessee, Kentucky, and then it's come around covering Arkansas, um, parts of Oklahoma, it looks like, Missouri, Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, and Alabama. So it looks like it's spread out, and I think it's turning into a rain event for these states is what it looks like. Here it is uh, for precipitation for today on Climate Reanalyzer, and we can we can run it for the 10 days, and we can see that this storm is going to move on up. It's not stopping. <clears throat> it looks like it's going to spread out and move on up. <clears throat> It's moving in and so Louisiana didn't get very much and all the hype was they were gonna be covered up and have a big hurricane and now it's moving on up so there's that here's the latest goes picture the GOES satellite for this event. 
And if we refresh, it's probably a little darker. I've had this up a while because it's dark on the east coast. So we can't really see the clouds that much now. I've got an article about Barry. Let's see. I've got two articles. Where is it? Here's. This is the one I wanted to show. This is from the Washington Post. This is from today. It says Barry downgraded to a depression but still brings risk of flooding rain from Louisiana to Arkansas. Rainfall has been less than feared, but life-threatening flooding is still expected as the storm heads north. So they're not out of the woods yet, and they're acting like everything is fine. But look at this picture, and we saw this on Climate Reanalyzer too, where it splits off, and we've got heavy rain down here in the south and heavy rain up in the north. And I showed this yesterday too, where it was going up to Arkansas. Uh, flood watches cover Louisiana, except for the northwestern part of the state, por portion of the state, Mississippi, much of eastern Ar Arkansas, and western Tennessee. Up to seven to ten inches of rain in have fallen in parts of southern Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, though the forecasts for up to 25 inches have not materialized. So that's why I'm thinking this was a managed storm. It's just not what they predicted. And here's this. I've shown this before. So this is, a, this is from National Weather Service. The latest update was at 5 p.m. The depression is centered 20 miles north-northeast of Shreveport, Louisiana, and headed north at 9 miles an hour. Its maximum sustained winds are down to 35 miles an hour, and further weakening is expected. So that was at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, and it's 9 p.m. now, so it's moving on. Um, when was this? Thinking this. Where's the date on this? I don't see a date. I thought this was from today. Yeah. Oh no, this was from yesterday. I'm sorry, but I like I like the pictures on this. It showed it. So that was from yesterday like last night basically here it is from today Barry brings rain to Louisiana but leaves New Orleans largely unscathed they did have some damage though and they did have quite a bit of flooding um, they had some tornadoes um, but it did move on up Rain, well, it says rainfall can be a stealth killer, etc. We still have life-threatening conditions as the, storm, as the storm moves north into northern Louisiana, Mississippi, and western Tennessee. Uh, they left out Arkansas, and it's showing it's hitting Arkansas as well, and Missouri. But they don't care about that, I don't guess. So, at the end it tells what damage they had. So let's see. <coughs> see what it says. Mandeville uh, flooding wasn't severe. Well, I should... I saw some videos. This guy was showing a whole bunch of flooding in Mandeville. You know, I just, you just wonder. The last three evacuees were Melvin, Sino, 
75, his wife Alicino, 69, and their daughter Angela Wilson, 48. Melvin and Alice have special needs and had to be loaded into a medical transport van for the trip home. A hundred and six people had been living on cots in the Bella Chassis High School Auditorium. That was at the height of the storm on Saturday morning. So all the evacuees left at noon. They all went back home today. So that's a good thing. This is kind of a long article. Okay, on the Laforge Parish side of Des Alamans, a town about 40 minutes southwest of New Orleans. Mark Fonseca's property sits directly on the Bayou Des Alamans. He had stacked sandbans, sandbags on top of a small levee wall he built with rocks, clay, and dirt last year. Fonseca, a blue crab, catfish, and alligator fisherman, has lived in this house his entire life. The water table is a lot higher than when I was younger, he said. We're supposed to be losing coastland every year and the water comes up quicker now than it used to. So that's what ends the article. Yes, it comes up quicker because the water is higher and the water is higher all around the coastlines because the sea levels are rising because we have melting melting ice everywhere. We have glaciers melting from Greenland. We have glaciers melting from the Antarctic. We have ice melting here and there. Now I thought I saw a list of the damage somewhere. By Sunday, cars were back on the streets and restaurants, which had been operating with skeletal staffs, resumed normal service. Airlines that had canceled flights in and out of the city began resuming regular operations Sunday morning. You know, I wonder if this was a beta test to see how people would react. I kind of wonder... Because for them to be so far off from what the predictions were. Is, um, okay, here it is. For them to be so far off from the predictions is, is kind of weird. Okay, um, there were no fatalities definitely linked to the storm. Louisiana residents experienced 188,000 power outages. National Guardsmen evacuated 48 medically fragile patients from a darkened medical center in New Iberia, and another 45 people had to be rescued for various reasons in other parts of the state. So this was, maybe, maybe they wanted a hurricane. Maybe they had to m make a hurricane now and I don't know, maybe it was some kind of Illuminati thing with the numbers or something. The date and who the hell knows. I don't know anymore. In the meantime, in Africa, two million in Zimbabwe's capital have no water as city turns off the taps. This is from today. The situation is bad, period, says spokesman for Harare Council. As suburbs go weeks without water, 
and cases of typhoid are reported. More than two million residents around Zimbabwe's capital have no access to running water as drought and breakdowns push the city system to collapse. Just 50% of 4.5 million people in Harare and four satellite towns currently have access to the municipal water supply. There is rotational water supply within the five towns. Some people are getting water five days a week, especially in the western suburbs, but the northern suburbs are going for weeks without a drop in their taps. What is this? Rotational water? I guess that's how they're rationing the water. Oh my god. Uh, people were either depending on water merchants, open wells, streams, or several council drilled, drilled boreholes. Waterborne diseases linked to these boreholes are on the rise, but people have had to take in their own hands water supply because the utility has failed to provide water. There were 10 typhoid cases reported during the first week of July. Cities around the world are facing increased water stress. Last week, the Indian city of Chennai began using trains to ferry in emergency supplies after rains failed. In 2018, Cape Town in South Africa avoided a citywide water network shut down by just a few months. Zimbabwe is getting warmer as the climate changes and heavy rains and droughts are becoming more intense. In Harare, rains are expected in October at earliest. So, there you go. You know, too bad they can't just, like, save some of that flood water for when there's droughts. It just doesn't make sense. <clears throat> and here's more, one more water <clears throat> water article. This is from EcoWatch. 90 dead and 1 million displaced by monsoon flooding in India and Nepal. Now this is interesting. I saw and I saw an article somewhere that somewhere in India the drought's so bad that they're having to use, uh, buy bottled water for surgeries in the hospitals they're having to use bottled water for for surgeries and then here's this flooding look at this look at that picture and there are people missing monsoon flooding in India at least 65 people have died in Nepal police said Monday as BBC News reported 30 are missing and 38 have been injured. In India, meanwhile, at least 25 have died and around a million were forced to flee their homes. And Disaster Relief Organization Rapid Response Chief Executive Mohammed Farooq told the New York Times. July is usually the wettest month of South Asia's often deadly monsoon season, but the flooding has been particularly extreme in Nepal this year. More intense monsoons in the region are projected to be one of the impacts of the climate crisis. <coughs> So there's that. So I'll leave links below. <coughs> so, you know, here's these people, you know, going on and on about Barry, which didn't, didn't do hardly anything. And in the meantime, you've got all these people 
dead and missing from and a million displaced by monsoon flooding in India and Nepal. And you know, people need to just start moving away from the coastlines if they want to survive a little bit longer. That's all there is to it. You know, they just, otherwise, you know, this is what's going to happen along with tsunamis and all kinds of stuff. Okay, I'm going to close out some of these things. I mean, this is, we can just expect this, and anyway, <clears throat> so I thought I'd get back to reading some of the comments, because this is how we have our community here, <clears throat> so I'm going to start <clears throat> with a comment from yesterday from my video from yesterday uh, from day two days ago <coughs> my voice will hold up it's feeling better by the way <coughs> this is from Unidin 2211 he says great info update and report on this stuff thanks purse had to go do stuff for a few days and back to some old more seismic activity same old more seismic activity and weather disaster or near disasters for people in impacted regions really stressing our population and society absolutely it's very stressing and welcome back unidin 2211 he's a regular commenter here a regular viewer so welcome back and thanks for being here and you you hit it the nail on the head regular stressing of population and society and you really need some good stress management skills to get through even reading the headlines remember to breathe <laughs> get away from it get up walk around go do something normal you know <clears throat> I'm kinda I guess I'm used to it I don't know I don't get pains anymore when I read this stuff so I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know. Then under my video from yesterday, Alfred Phillips. Now he lives, he's one of our our viewers from Alaska. He says, good evening, Marco. Thanks for sharing. Amen. From northern Alaska, Wainwright, Alaska, western Arctic coast region. Thank you, Alfred. You haven't left a message in a while, so I'm glad you're here and doing well. Um, and then Rosemary Hill comments and says, Good to see a comment from you, Alfred. I remember you from months ago, way up there on the Arctic coast. Be safe and take care of yourself. Absolutely. And then Michael Berlin says, Alfred, please tell us what you see at your location weather with temps a general observation and yes and I would like to encourage people to in the comments you can leave um, you know what's going on weather wise or uh, with the temp temperatures or with the methane in your area or the ozone or um, you know things related so that we can we can see how it all of this stuff is impacting uh, impacting us on a personal level so thank you um, Rosemary and Michael for being here and for uh, for commenting and and um, greeting Alfred and then Rosemary says thank you Margo you are the only one keeping us up to date on the big picture Oh, you're welcome, Rosemary, and thank you for being here and being um, a faithful, loyal viewer. And I feel like you're, um, you know, turning into a real personal friend and, you know, a sister, sister here. I feel a real sistership with you. So thank you for being here. And I'm trying to keep everyone up to date. 
it's hard because everything's happening so fast. And then Fred Blog said, I had a look at Sweden's weather from the methane release. It was very wet, lots of rain, and cool, only 50 as a 50s Fahrenheit. Oh, only 50s Fahrenheit. Well, uh, thank you, Fred, for looking at that. Uh, so we don't know why there was so much methane releasing. What, what rain, rain will make it release. But I'm thinking that those Norwegian countries are probably, they probably have a lot of permafrost that's melting. Depending on the terrain, you know, if they have a lot of peat, um, stuff like that, that's probably with it warming up, even with it only in the 50s, they could have a lot of melting permafrost. So thank you for that, looking that up and, and leaving that comment, Fred, and thank you for being here. And then Michael Berlin says, thanks, Margo, you're the best. Well, thank you, Michael, for that comment, and um, thank you for being here. And then Colin Shaw leaves a nice comment, and he's he's one of my regulars. Hi, Margo. Sulfur dioxide and a um, host of others are now recognized by off-stream media scientists, which are independent from hierarchy, silencing, and bullying, are talking about global dimming, not the sun, but gas particles, etc., blocking photons and essential sun plasma, etc., from nourishing the earth from its normal and natural intended ratios, as you know. Beautifully presented and narrated. Thanks for the new data and update. Higher love and God protect. Thank you, Colin. I always love reading your comments and feel a special connection with you too and um, I agree and that they're they're trying to block out the um, the Sun's rays and the plasma and the energy from the Sun and that's the life force and without that we nothing will grow you know and however they block it out well oh, adjusting my arm on my chair here. However they block it out, whether it's with um, with geoengineering or, you know, creating sulfur dioxide releases or God knows what. I mean, they're thinking of all different things to do to, to dim, block it out. And, um, you know, it's, it's just not going to be good, and it's going to backfire on everyone, and the, the powers that be especially. And it's going to end up keeping the heat trapped here, and there won't be any release. And, and also, the plants can't grow, life can't grow, we have to have sunlight. We have to have sunlight for photosynthesis, and um, it's, otherwise it just won't happen. So thank you for your lovely comment, and God bless you, and higher love to you too, and I pray that you're protected as well. Patricia Powell says, thanks again, Margot. Can't believe all this terrible stuff. Everyone seems to be falling apart. Let's all try to help one another through this stuff. Blessings to you and yours. Thank you, Patricia. Um, good to see you here again. And I know it's, it's a lot of terrible stuff. And, you know, we do see people falling apart and things falling apart. And, you know, it's like... Velikovsky, where he talks about in Mankind in Amnesia, where we're, we're triggered. With these cataclysms, we have this unconscious part of ourselves that, um, that remembers. Our soul consciousness remembers cataclysms where it was, 
it, we were near extinction or total extinction or whatever but that's stored in our soul consciousness and we're being we're all being triggered again by that and so when this happens people do start losing it people do start going crazy and they don't know why but it's the stress it's the impending doom and it's there's the pre-traumatic stress is what i call it and you know you know that the end is near but you know it's not here yet and it's so it's just like the pot just keeps the water keeps getting hotter and hotter and we're in there boiling and everything and you know we can't jump out there's nowhere to go and it would just be a lot easier if everything would just blow up and we get it all over with but you know that's not God's plan you know God we just have to assume that God God is in control and we'll be here until we're not here till it's the right time that we're supposed to leave that's my belief I know that other people have different beliefs so thank you for your comment and blessings to you too Patricia and then magical thinking Barbie says please sir may we die at the beginning of summer next year I have to laugh or I will cry yeah I know and it's like um, it's like whatever time we have it's not enough you know we complain and say oh you know we can't how could it get any worse oh it could always get worse it could always get worse and right now a lot of us are still pretty comfortable you know our society hasn't fallen apart yet we still have the internet we still have our daily lives the Cascadia subduction zone hasn't fallen off and Yellowstone hasn't blown up and we're not having to live off the land and we're not being covered up in three feet of ash and you know I mean it could be worse so thank you for being here magical thinking Barbie and um, yeah we have to laugh we have to because otherwise we would you know it's you know I've cried I did all my crying years ago when the trees I st when the trees told me goodbye that's when I did my grieving a lot of my grieving and they told me years ago that they were going to be leaving because it was not going to be safe for them to be here anymore and I didn't know what that meant but now I know now I know and I see it and I understand and um, I don't cry anymore I wish I could but it makes my eyes hurt to cry so it's probably a good thing that I don't cry um, but the sea ice yeah if we make it through this year I don't know you know it's it and it's going to be a rough winter and there are going to be food shortages starting this fall so right now you know people in privileged situations still have food but because of the way the storms have been and the way you know the farmers haven't been able to plant their crops or grow their crops or whatever you know we're going to start seeing huge food shortages this fall and so that's when that's when it's going to start getting ugly so um yeah the beginning of next summer you know if we last that long but um we'll see we'll see what happens but you know I try not to make predictions except I know the end is near I just don't know when and blue ocean event you know I don't know we're seeing the effects of it we're definitely seeing the effects of 
little to no sea ice now because it's just so thin and it's not doing doing what it needs to do so I will be I think I'll be reading comments again <clears throat> when when we have these like this where we're sharing and you know talking about our feelings I think it's good for for me to read the comments and we can have our community here oh and I wanted to show you all something else I'm going to go to my dashboard and um, so here here are my videos right and um, see no revenue because I'm not monetized and um, see my video from last night right now it's showing 192 views well this morning when I got up and you know I loaded everything up and it was showing what was it 135 views and then after a while I refreshed and it went down to a hundred a hundred view or 105 or something like that so they took off 30 views and this has been happening with almost every single one of my videos they just take off right in front of my eyes and so I don't know how many views I actually have on all of these on all of my 400 and some odd videos I have no clue but it's a lot more than what it's showing and if people could thumbs up I've got 18 thumbs up from my video from last night so I appreciate that so if y'all could remember to do the thumbs up and that would help people to find my videos too because I'm being shadow banned so anyway now let's okay so let's move on to earthquakes we've got a bunch to talk about here <clears throat> we've got USGS pulled up all magnitudes for the last 24 hours and we're showing 979 worldwide and of those 65 are two and a half magnitude or higher and I forgot to pull up my trimmer map so I'm gonna pause and get that I'll be right that I'll be right back all right so okay I'm on that one so here we are <coughs> at uh, two and a half magnitude or higher I'm back 65 earthquakes worldwide of that magnitude and um, but before we go on let's see right now we have 737 in the Southern California event area that I've been tracking this morning there were 695 here and that was oh I've got the wrong picture hold on all right I'm back it's hard to keep all these pictures straight here's the picture from today this morning I took this at 9 10 a.m. Pacific time is showing 713 in the event area of Ridgecrest Searles Valley and Coso Junction area in Southern California and 904 worldwide and that is up that was up a little bit from yes from yesterday yesterday there were 695 in this area 910 worldwide that was the lowest it's been since everything happened and this is day day 11 now and so it looks like it's coming back up because 
this evening. Now it's up to 736 here and 977 worldwide and this morning there were 904 wor worldwide. So it looks like we're on the increase again. So let's see what's going to come off the map. Costa Rica 3.7 that came in at 641 last night and we can look at that <coughs> and then here's a 5.0 in Indonesia at 605 last night so let's <coughs> oh wrong one I keep clicking the wrong one so I'm gonna close out that one now I was disoriented there Let's go to the Caribbean first. We're showing 14 here today. So uh, 1.6, 2.7, 2.6, 3.1. That's the one that's about to come off the map. No, that came in this morning. Oh, the 2.7. Anyway, I don't know what's about to come off the map. What did I say? I'm kind of losing it. I'm kind of having a brain fart. I'm sorry. Costa Rica. <coughs> All right. Well, let's finish the Caribbean since I'm here. Okay, 3.1, 2.3, 2.7, 1.6, 2.6. Two point nine, two point two, two point two, two point five, <clears throat> one point eight, two point one, and one point three. <clears throat> so that's here in the Caribbean. We're seeing a few more on Puerto Rico. Those are not big enough to do damage, but it's definitely showing movement. So Costa Rica was the one that's about to come off the map right down here it's on the coast it's in the ocean uh, 3.7 near Haco Costa Rica this came in at 641 last night while we're here here's another one at Colombia 4.4 we saw one here yesterday too this is at Piede Cuesta, Colombia. This came in at 8.49 last night, 141 kilometers deep. So the rest of South America is clear. Now let's pop across the Pacific. We've got a 4.5 near Sagave, Wallace and Futuna. It's near Tonga and Fiji. It's in between. It's up northeast of Fiji. This came in at 8.17 last night. 394 kilometers deep. Very deep. Very, very deep. Then, the big one for the day is this 6.2 on land at Candrian, Papua New Guinea. This came in at 121 this morning. 59 kilometers deep. Let's look at the w little wave picture. There are no tsunami announcements since July the 12th. So we're assuming that did not cause a tsunami. So that is not far from where we had this other series of earthquakes here. We had a whole bunch of them here a couple of weeks ago. <coughs> so that was on land. That could do damage. <coughs> Next up here, 
uh, 4.7 near Kota Ternate, Indonesia. This came in at 11.31 last night, 129 kilometers deep. And then down here is where um, we saw s some real big ones yesterday, and they're still aftershocking. What was it, a 7? Well, I think it was a 7.1 yesterday. So we've got a 5.0 at 8.05 last night, a 4.5 at 10.50 last night, and a 5.2 at 3.35 this morning. These are all at Lai Laiwui, Indonesia. And these times I'm telling you are Pacific time because it's my time zone. So this was on land. This one, it looks like it it was right on the coastline. So these are these are getting more to where they could do damage. Here's a 4.3 near Amahusu in the Banda Sea at 11:11 11, 11 this morning, 389 kilometers deep. Next, uh, 4.9 near Panangoda, Indonesia, at 10.59 last night, 38 kilometers deep. Then, a 5.7 near Kindal Reho, Indonesia, at 5.18 this afternoon, 91 kilometers deep. Look, this is next to Bali. There are a whole bunch of volcanoes over here. It looks like that was in the ocean though, so that probably didn't do any damage. But something like that could cause a landslide or, I mean, underwater, like a landslide underwater, a mudslide. It can cause coast the coast to give way. It can trigger volcanoes to go off, all kinds of things. Here's a 4.9 near Pegnag, China at 1041 this morning. Looks like that's in the middle of the Tibetan Plateau. And that's it. That's it? Is that it? For the international quakes? <coughs> I guess that's it. Well, that was quick. Now let's go to... Uh, now it's United States territory. Hawaii has 10 here today. <coughs> 1 1.9, 1.9, 1.1, 2.6, 2.5, 1.7, 1.8, 1.8, 2.1, 1.7. So this is down by Pahala. And these are over by Kilauea. And this is Lalani. So that's like three different areas. So that's showing movement. Next. Oh, and there was a fire. There was a big fire in Hawaii. I think they got it put out, though. Next, we'll look at Alaska. We've got 43 here today. So that's that number is decreasing from what we've seen recently of those four are two and a half magnitude or higher we've got a 2.6 near Anchorage 2.9 Koktovik 3.8 Gulf of Alaska and a 2.5 at False Pass Oh, and for people, if you want to see where Wainwright is, where Alfred lives, it's right up here. Right up here. 
He doesn't get any earthquakes up there. I haven't seen any happen right there. But the sea ice is all melted up there now. <coughs> all right, so now it's all magnitudes. Here's a 2.0 at Atka. 2.5 false pass, we saw that. Okay, let's come on in to the Cook Inlet. So there, we look at the lack of earthquakes here. It's so empty with less than 50 here. It's just empty looking. We just got a couple here in the Cook Inlet. And then we got a little cluster up here by Redoubt Volcano. There's a 2.3. 2.1, 1.9, and so forth. Here's a tiny cluster at Anchorage. There's a 2.1 Valdez, and so on. Here at Kobuk, we've got nine here today. These are small ones and under. Here's a 0.9 at Kotzebue. And up in the northern area of Alaska, we've got nine here. So that 2.9 was the highest. And here's a 2.0. So these are 2.9, that could have been a three. So that's kind of getting up there. But the rest are like twos, twos and ones. <coughs> Now coming on down into the lower 48, we're showing 891 here. So let's get our calculator. 891 minus, and 730 are at the California event area. So we've got 161 others in the lower 48 to look at. <coughs> Here's one, oops, too far, in northern Alabama. We've seen them here before. A 2.3 near Moore's Mill, Alabama. <coughs> Next, Oklahoma has 15 here today. <coughs> I think I'm losing my voice, so <clears throat> that's what happens when I go an hour. Okay, 15 here. We've got oh, too far. We've got two at Quentin, a 2.6 and a 1.6. One point two at Yale, one point one at Pawnee, one point three at Perry. We've got two at Stillwater, one point three and a point nine. Here's a two point oh at Helena. We saw that. And then at Blackwell, let's see what's going on at Blackwell. We've got seven here. <coughs> 2 .8, 1 .9, 1 6, 2 .9, 1 .4, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1, 2 .1
<clears throat> I'm sorry about my throat. I can't help it. Now, in Utah, <clears throat> one point six Parawan, one point two Moab, one point five Hiram, and then in the Yellowstone area. Oh, this is eerily quiet. We've only got three, all at West Yellowstone. A 1.9, 2.4, and a 0.3. So that's eerily quiet. It's like pressure is building. You worry. You worry when you just see three there. You, you just worry. <coughs> Okay, in the Pacific Northwest here, um, let's look at the tremor map. This was from yesterday. They showed 19 tremors up here. I mean 119 up here on Vancouver Island. And that was it. But, oh, how did that happen? <coughs> They're actually showing today's, too. I think they're updating better, and you can show more real-time. Here it is from today, and we have to hit search again to update it. And we're showing 76 trimmers. And look how they're divided up. We've got <coughs> three parts, three groups on Vancouver Island. Then we've got a group. Now this is, this is right on the end, right next to that bay area. And then we've got a cluster down here south of Eugene, between Eugene and Medford. So that's what the trimmers are looking like. So... We're still having earthquakes up here. We've got quite a bit going on. We've got nine here in Washington. So we're gonna start up here by Seattle where they had that four, what was it? A 4.4 or 4.6? There are three here today, a point eight. 1.9 and a 1.3 so that's still moving <coughs> then um, here's a 1.5 near West Longview here are two at Mount St. Helens it looks like well here's Mount St. Helens so these are to the south a point two and a po zero. These are at Amboy. And then over to the east. Look at this. We've got three over here near Desert Air. And this is this is near the Hanford Nuclear Facility where they store nuclear waste and they they're well known for their accidents well known so this is not comforting we've got a point eight and a 1.0 at Basin City and a 1.4 these two are at Desert Air and then this one is at Basin City So earthquakes next to a nuclear waste facility is not a good mix. That does not make me feel comforted. Oh my gosh, look at Northern California. Oh, and by the way, there was an earthquake that popped up here 
by Shasta this morning and they took it off the map. It's not there now. I should have taken a screenshot, but I didn't. This is the Cascadia subduction zone here. This is the Juan de Fuca plate. And this is the area that they're talking about that if this goes, it's lights out for a whole lot of people. <coughs> And so people are being advised, if you feel so led, to go at least 50 to 100 miles inland, away from the coastlines. And if you're in Southern California, to go east and south, south and east, like near Blythe. So that's what's being advised okay Northern California here we go we've got a 1.7 near Covalo 1.5 Lake Pillsbury and a 1.8 Redwood Valley then over here is a 0.8 near Portola and then here's a 1.0 at Pyramid Lake to the east of Pyramid Lake in in these mountains I forget the name of those mountains anyway Lake Range the Lake Range Mountains <clears throat> and that's almost a straight line over see you got a straight line over from there then there was a 0.5 near Virginia City. Here's a 1.1 near Bridgeport. Then we got some small ones as we come through Nevada. Here's a 1.6 at Warm Springs. And then Southern Nevada is <coughs> looking more normal. They've got they've got a little cluster here. <coughs> at Beatty, microquakes. 1.2 at Alamo. Oh, and did you see the the million UFO enthusiasts are going to be storming Area 51 because they want to know the truth. Yeah, good luck with that. You couldn't pay me enough money to be part of that. 1.5 at Gabs, Nevada. And they're, they said, oh, we can go faster than their bullets. Well, guess what? They don't use bullets. The technology they have, y you know, I would, you could not pay me enough money to go down there. Here's a 1.2 at Big Pine. Here's 7 at Mammoth, Mammoth Lakes today. These are... 1.5 is the largest. <clears throat> okay, the geysers showing 37 today, so that's an uptick. And I think they had a larger one down there. They had a 3.1 at the geysers today. Here's a 1.0 at Lakeport. So 3.1 is mixed in here somewhere. Most of these are ones and under. Here's that 3.1. It's on the side. Now let's come down this red line, which is the San Andreas Fault Line. 3.3 Morgan Hill. That's getting up there. Here's a 1.9 at Prunedale. 1.2 Prunedale. 1.3 New Idria. 
So this is a really quiet. 1.6 Fraser Park. 1.1 Piru. Piru. P I R U. Piru. Now in Southern California, without the event area, is 52 here today, so that's an uptick what's going on up here. This is the Glen Avon region. That's coming back to life. We've got 10 in this area today. What's this one? It's a 1.1. 1 .1. So these are these are small looks like. Uh, 1.8 that's the largest. That's not tiny. That was at Glen Avon. Here's a 1.4 Glen Avon 1.7 Loma Linda so they're kind of coming back to life in this area and we're seeing them peppered around oh look a, a quarry blast of 1.4 at Holmes Garden Home Gardens Home Gardens look at all these they're really spreading out <coughs> So this is, see we're seeing a line, seeing clustering again. This is at Anza. Here's Kawia. So that's an uptick in the number. Here's Yucca Valley. We've got four here today. 2.2. .2. That's the highest. That's getting on up there. Now let's come into the event area. Now, when we're zoomed out a little bit, we can see, I've already done that one. So here's a 1.7 at Tehachapi. Here's a 1.6 at Boron. Here's a 1.4 Johannesburg. We can see they're spreading out the general direction. They're still going this southeast up to the northwest, but the movement is now this is the Trona area and it's tending to spread out a little more. And we can see that here in the close-up view too. So there's a huge cluster, huge clustering going on down here in Johannesburg and California City. Look, Garlock. The town the fault was named after. Garlock Fault Line. So we're just going to keep an eye on this. Um, there was, let's look at the two and a half magnitude or higher down here. There are 36 here today, so that's that's still quite a few. I think there was a four here today. We've been threes and twos. Yeah, 4.2 at Coso Junction. This came in at 138 this morning. And so on. So they're not out of the woods yet. And I've seen videos of how this is just split open. So roads are, you know, things are displaced. Areas dropped one or two feet you know it's um, I mean a lot has happened here so they are not out of the woods so I'm gonna keep everyone in my prayers let's zoom out and s oh we're up to 960 
So I think we're on on the upswing now for earthquakes. It was 904 this morning. So I think we're on the upswing for the number of earthquakes worldwide. Let's see if anything else came in. Little Lake, Little Lake. Yeah, they're still coming in. 2.5 at Little Lake. That's in the area. That's the event area. And um, that came in at 618. Here's a 2.7 that came in at 605. 3.1. Came in at 550, 2.9 came in at 526, and we saw that 5.7 at Kindle Reho. Did we see this one? Kindle Reho, Indonesia. Oh, yeah, that's the one by Bali. Sorry if I repeat. I don't remember with thousands of earthquakes to look at. I don't remember what I've looked at many times. So I'm going to sign off. This was a long show. So I'm going to keep everyone in my prayers. We need to be praying for everybody. everybody. <clears throat> so I love you guys and just pray for the best to happen for everyone for your highest good and time is very short we are in the end times and no one knows the day or the hour so just keep your eyes on the skies and keep looking up and keep a spiritual focus and until next time God bless you go in peace and good night